Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitert here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended reporting a wet and sticky discharging left ear. And as you can see, they've got a, an ear infection here. It is quite damp, there's some granulation tissue. Now, in a moment, you're going to see the patient jump. Uh, they were just surprised by the noise of the suction uh, when it was suctioning some of this uh, wet squam, so um, epithelial um, skin, which is the outermost layer of skin. And you can see it's quite damp, it's infected. And uh, we, when we've got a buildup of dead skin like this, we call this epithelium hyperplasia. Um, so you just get a, a buildup of uh, skin in this, in this case, and it can cause a thickening on the surface of the, the canal wall. And what we want to do is clear this, because I want to see what's underneath this. Uh, quite often, when you see an ear like this, and you peel away all this um, squamous tissue, you reveal an underlying pathology. And in this case, I suspect the patient is suffering from a stage 2 external auditory canal cholesteratoma. So um, a cholesteratoma is essentially uh, a, a, a skin cyst and this cyst of um, epithelial skin which is the outer layer of the skin so your skin has three layers you've got the epidermis layer which is the outermost layer which is made up of epithelial skin cells and the term squamous uh, just refers to the shape of these skin cells so squamous are flat uh, like pancakes or fish scales you can get cuboidal which are as the name suggests, cuboid shaped. Now you can see a bit of blood there, and this is just due to granulation tissue. We haven't uh, made contact with the canal wall, um, which is another sign of an infection. Um, so granulation tissue is inflammatory tissue, which means there is some trauma and some healing going on here. And granulation tissue is connective tissue, and it has its own... Uh, it go, undergoes a process called neovascularization. It forms its own blood capillaries. So quite often when you're removing granulation tissue, and sometimes um, it's hidden away, so when you peel away some debris like this, you rupture some of these blood um, capillaries, and the patient is, has got a lot more granulation tissue, and you'll you can probably see some of that already just near the entrance on the left-hand side, but it will become a lot more visible during the course of the procedure. Yeah, so squamous is just the um, the the type of um, epithelial skin cell. So underneath this outer protective epidermis layer, you've got the dermis layer of skin, which contains collagen, um, elastin, and then you've got the um, subcutaneous um, layer of skin. It's made up of fatty tissue. Now, in, in, in the case of the ear, the outer third of the ear canal has the three layers of skin, whereas the inner two thirds, the bony part, only has the epidermis layer of skin. So it's when this epithelial layer of skin forms into a cyst and when it does, it can release um, what we call lysosomal proteolytic enzymes, which can then cause an ulceration of the, the underlying skin as well. So you get um, exposed bone and you begin to see this bone here. And I'm touching it because sometimes you can get keratin, uh, which is... Um, when that outer layer of skin, the epidermis layer of skin, is uh, is actually sh being shared and it's essentially dead. And when that um, outer layer of skin is dead, we call that desquamous epithelial um, skin. Um, the, sk the skin cell itself loses its function and it's replaced by keratin. So keratin is a protein and... Uh, quite often with dead skin in the ear, so desquamous skin. Um, you get a lot of keratin. And keratin can harden. So initially I just like, a bit like this. This is a bit of keratin epithelial skin here. So it's dead skin that's shed and it's full of keratin. And it can harden at times. So initially I was wondering whether this is keratin or skin, but it's not. This is actually exposed bone. So the skin, you can probably, you can actually see the ridge of skin through the centre of the screen there. So the skin should be lining this portion of the bony part of the ear canal, but it's been ulcerated by the release of these proteolytic enzymes by the squamous skin, so the skin that hasn't shed. And it's then left the underlying bone exposed and you're getting, we've got a condition called periosteitis. So 
um, in between the epidermis skin and the bone, you've got a thin sh sheet called periosteum, and that supplies the bone and actually the skin, um, all the blood and uh, oxygen and nutrients that it requires. In the absence of the periosteum, you then start to develop what we call osteonecrosis, and that's when the bone begins to die uh, because it hasn't got all the oxygen, blood and nutrients that it requires and the bone tissue begins to, to um, disease away. Um, so at present, th um, there is the bone, I wouldn't, there's no m a crater crater. So if this is left untreated, this bone that is obviously lacking all the blood and oxygen and nutrients that it requires. So it's osteonecrotic at the moment, it then literally breaks away and separates. And when the bone separates, we call that sequestrum. And that's when you get a crater formed. So in the case of a, a canal cleshiotoma, there's four stages. The, um, the first stage is called uh, the canal epithelial hyperplasia. So we saw that initially, we had this increased layer of squamous skin that had thickened on the surface. Once we remove that, we can see that the underlying bone is exposed um, and there's therefore periosteitis and that's because of all the inflammation discharge we know that because of the granulation tissue um, and then stage three is when you get sequestrum of the bones so the bone begins to separate and you get a crater uh, an erosion widening of the bone um, and if you've been watching my channel there's, there's quite a few that uh, also in the last month that i've uploaded um, and then stage four is when the bony erosion becomes quite severe and significant and it invades uh, adjacent parts of the ear. So, for example, the mastoid bone, which in this ear would be the bone on the right-hand side. So this patient's right side of the ear canal is actually um, unaffected. The skin is there. It's not ulcerated. So you can't see the underlying bone. But sometimes you can get this canal cleshitome on the back part of the ear canal. Typically, um, they're located inferiorly on the floor of the ear canal, so, but this patient's floor of the ear canal, I'm just cleaning it away just to make sure there's nothing visible there. So there doesn't appear to be any canalculatoma located there. Um, but in this particular patient, it's located anteriorly on the front portion of the ear canal. So this can go towards the temporomandibular jaw joint. Um, and in very rare cases, it can actually grow inwards as well, um, medially through the eardrum. Um, but that's not very common, but that it, I think it has been docu documented before. So in, in case of the incidence rates of the canal cleshitoma, you're looking probably one in a thousand cases that present at ENT departments. So it's quite rare. Um, and as I said, patients can sometimes be completely uh, non-symptomatic. They don't really have any pain or any hearing loss. Um, a lot of the patients, they will suffer from um, persistent um, discharge from the ear. And if it is, if there is pain, it's more dulled rather than acute um, pain. So in this case, as I said, the patient just had a bit of discharge, which is crystallised at the entrance. You will see right at the end of the procedure, I removed that. Now, as I started to remove this, the front part of the ear canal where this what I believe is to be a canal cleshitoma was a bit sensitive for the patient, so we just had to be a bit gentle there. And there is some granulation tissue present still, you'll see that. And then there probably is a bit of sequestrum of the bone, the top ridge, where there is probably some thickened keratin there adjacent to it as well, but I'll still probably classify this as a stage two. So we've requested an urgent ENT referral. Uh, patient's been um, fully advised to avoid water in the ear because that will kind of just... Um, make matters a lot worse so you can see it's all in the front part of the ear canal and it just the ear to me just has an appearance that the patient has been getting water into that possibly could be a trigger it's led to an infection and this infection then secondary to that the patient's um, developed a, uh, a canal cleshiotoma um, sometimes patients can develop a canal cleshitoma um, due to radiotherapy because um, that 
radiotherapy around the head and neck can lead to loss of blood vessels. And in the absence of blood vessels, uh, the periosteum can't supply the blood and nutrients to um, the bone and skin, and then it can cause a, an erosion of the ear canal, and then the skin can then fall into that and not fully migrate and then release its enzymes. That would probably be more what we call um, um, osteonecrosis as opposed to a canal cholesterol. So they are very similar conditions in the ear, <coughs> the other one being a benign osteonecrosis. But that mechanism is more of what I call a bottom-up um, disorder, whereas a canal cholesterol is a top-down. And what I mean by that is when you've got a loss of blood flow to the part of the ear canal and the bone dies, that's a bottom-up condition where the bone then dies and it creates a widening and an erosion and dead skin or even squamous skin can fall inside and then cause an infection. Whereas more often with a canal cholesterol, it's a top-down, it's the squamous skin at the surface of the ear canal that causes an ulceration and then erodes the bone. So um, th- hopefully we've caught this in the nick of time where the patient may not need surgery, we shall see. But otherwise, sometimes surgery is required where all that necrotic bone is removed and then um, typically a muscle graft is placed to cover the exposed area. Um, So I've asked the patient to keep me updated. Otherwise, I hope you're all keeping well and I shall speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.